Before we get to John Deere, let's stop at the largest frying pan. Take a quick picture. Hey everyone, I'm Brian and you're watching Someplace or Another. And today I'm in Waterloo at the John Deere Engine Factory and Museum. Let's go. Did you know this museum is free? That is super cool. This model was used by salesmen to demonstrate how the real thing worked and is the only model known to exist. Can you imagine work before machines? All right, I don't know about the view back here. Watch your step. Wash day made easy. Engines take the burden of laundry day. Laundry used to be one of the most difficult and time-consuming household tasks. What does it take to wash a load of laundry? 18 hours. Three people doing laundry by hand. Whew. And seven hours. Two people using a hand-cranked washing machine. Five hours. Two people using an engine-powered washing machine. And today, 20 minutes with a modern-day washing machine. This two-row machine with this rotary drop mechanism soon became the industrial standard for improving the accuracy and efficiency of planting. Some farmers saved money by buying conversion kits like the one fitted to the Ford Model T so their cars could work more like tractors in the field. A brand born in Waterloo to market its products in the early 1900s. The Waterloo Gasoline Engine Company created the Waterloo Boy brand. The brand was used in a variety of company products, including engines, cream separators, and manure spreaders. The brand was so popular that Deere and Company continued to use it for many years after buying the Waterloo business. But the Waterloo Boy tractor introduced in 1912 soon became the company's most well-known product with thousands sold around the world within the first five years. John Deere and the War Efforts the Iowa Transmission Company. On March 1941, Deere was the prime contractor for making transmissions and final drive units for the M3 medium tanks, with the Iowa Transmission Company in Waterloo doing the fabrication and production. In 1927, the Model D took its place as the largest two-cylinder engine that Deere ever produced at 501 cubic inches Wow, I think it's huge. The John Deere Model D was produced from 1923 till 1953. The Model D experienced the longest production run of any John Deere tractor. It was widely popular across the country and exported to South America and Russia. This John Deere Model BI industrial tractor was one of John Deere's early entries into the construction market. This tractor was shipped to John Deere Plow Works in 1936 and used as a work tractor around the factory for almost 50 years. Tractor seats through the years. We have the pan seat and we have the deep cushion seat, float ride seat, copy, and the posture seat. This tractor was rediscovered in a salvage yard near Iowa City in 1990 and restored to its current condition. A meat market, as farmers' demand for power grew beyond the capabilities of the two-cylinder engine, Deere launched a top-secret development project in 1953. To maintain such secrecy, the group worked out of a farmer grocery store 
known as the Meat Market. The few who knew about the project were under strict orders to tell no one, including their wives. Rumors about Deer's new tractors swirled, but most of them proved untrue or incomplete, as the secret was kept right up till the big day. This tractor was at Deer Day in 1960. Lance Bulldog was a tractor company manufactured in Germany. John Deere bought the company in 1956 and started using the name John Deere Lance. This tractor was originally produced for the United States Naval Construction Platoon, or the CBs. The on and off switch for the 5000 watt generator. Okay, let's get to work. Let's check out their version of the engineering studio. I do like the uh, drawing cabinet. Let's see what they have on top. Looks like we have Ed Marshall's machinist toolbox. Use that toolbox for 40 years while working for John Deere. That's a machinist box. Looking at a production drill press. In 1959, they started using the Toledo scale because it used a counterbalance instead of a tension spring, which was more accurate than other scales. This is the inside of a 531 engine used on the 5020 tractor, first produced in 1965. This is a 1960s power shift transmission. Cool. I get to sit in this one. Alright, where do they put the key? Do they have a key? Did you know John Deere sold bicycles? This particular bike was ridden to and from the shop for many years. Moving on up to the newer equipment. Alrighty. 
Alrighty, we're in the tractor. Oh, oh, I didn't expect that. Alright, that was a fun museum. Uh, see you someplace or another. Bye. That was a fun museum. But that time clock's not real. No in and out times. Stay tuned for more adventure to come. Subscribe, like, share, and thanks for watching. Bye.